Hi and welcome to another BrettWeiss.com Excel screencast tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on finding the final row and final column of a data set using VBA. And this is going to allow our macros that we create to be much more flexible and dynamic when handling data sets. So as an illustration, say I want to, I have a, a worksheet here, a transfer worksheet, and I have an original worksheet. The original worksheet is going to represent some data that we've imported from another source, say a database or the internet. Right now it has the month sales of each of our eight products that we have and we want to in one button transfer this data to the transfer worksheet, add a totals row and format it the way we want. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you'd like this workbook to follow along with and view the code, click the link in the description box of this video and it'll take you to brettweiss.com where you can view the code and the workbook. So let's head over to the VBA editor. I've started the macro import sales and we just need to add a couple things namely the final row and final column variables so you can see I've defined the variables here I've defined them as long data type this first set of instructions will set the worksheet variable our original worksheet is WSO our transfer worksheet is WST we're gonna clear all the previous data in the transfer worksheet so we're gonna start fresh and now we need to find the final row and column of our data set in the original worksheet. So the syntax for finding the final row and column are as follows. The final row variable is going to be equal to the worksheet we want, which is WSO, cells, rows, dot count, column one, dot end, Excel up, dot row. And for final column, it's the same idea. We're going to start in row one, columns, dot count, and Excel to left, dot column. So now what is this actually doing on the worksheet? So if we go back to the worksheet and go to our original data set, here's what those lines of code are doing. First, we're starting at for, the fi for finding the final row, we're starting at the last row of the data set in column one. So if we control down, Excel is starting here, and then the end Excel up command is going to just be like, if you press end on your keyboard, you can get into end mode, you hit the directional arrow up, and it'll return that row number. So that's the final row number in our data set. And the same idea with the final column. So we'll head back to the VBA editor. Next, this line of code will transfer the data from the original worksheet to the transfer worksheet. Note the use of the final row and final column variables. And next, when we are formatting the transfer worksheet, we're going to need to redefine our final row and final column variables because now we want to find the final row and final column of the WST worksheet. So we're just going to copy this over. Copy this down. So there's just a couple adjustments we have to make. First of all, we need to change the worksheet to WST. Second of all, in the final column variable, we can't leave this as row one because our data actually starts in row four, as you'll see here. We pasted the data set to A4, so the data is going to start in row four. So we have to change the final column row to start at to row four. So next we format the data. We're adding a totals row. And notice again, pretty much everything we do with this macro has these final column and final row variables somewhere in them. And this is going to allow for the flexibility that I'll show you in a second. So let's just see what this macro does. We're going to press the import data button. It's going to run our import sales macro. And you'll see here we have a nicely formatted report. It's got our month and product headings bolded. It has a total row. But the real beauty of it is, if we head back to the original worksheet, say instead of getting this whole year's data that we got data by each quarter. So if, say for the first quarter our download looked like this. We can go over to the transfer worksheet, we can import the data, and now our macro is flexible enough that we still have our total row in the right place, it's still bolded, and we still have transferred all the data that we wanted to. So if, again, 
Now we get up to July's data maybe. Back to the transfer worksheet, run the import, all the correct data is there. We can update it as we get more data. And all the way to, the, to December, import it. Our data will always be correct and we'll always get what we want from the download. So that shows you the true flexibility of having a final row and final column variable in your macros. I want to thank you for watching this screencast on brettweiss.com. Have a great day.